let's clear up student and youth culture. Trevor Project says anti-LGBTQ plus laws are creating public health crisis for LGBTQ plus youth. According to the Trevor Project's 2024 U.S. National Survey, recent political actions such as bans on gender-affirming care for minors and laws permitting the misgendering, outing, or exclusion of queer students have profoundly impacted LGBTQ plus youth. Approximately 90% of LGBTQ plus youth respondents reported negative effects on their well-being due to these policies. The safety of queer students in schools is particularly concerning, with nearly half of LGBTQ plus individuals aged 13 to 17 experiencing bullying in the past year. Alarmingly, those who endured bullying exhibited significantly higher rates of attempted suicide. A staggering 45% of transgender and non-binary young individuals revealed that their families have contemplated relocating due to these laws. Overall, 39% of LGBTQ plus youth have seriously considered suicide in the past year with even higher rates among transgender and non-binary youth and queer youth of color. Again, this means four out of every 10 LGBTQ plus youth in America have considered suicide. Despite such shocking statistics, half of LGBTQ plus youth seeking mental health care in the past year were unable to access it. In 2023, over 550 anti LGBTQ plus bills surfaced in the U.S., with 80 enacted into law. This year, 487 such bills have been introduced and 21 have passed. These measures often target LGBTQ plus students, aiming to censor curriculum or enforce outings leading to discrimination within educational settings. The Trevor Project National Survey reveals we have a crisis among LGBTQ plus youth in America. When I was thinking about the relocating thing, I was thinking about, okay, I'm bad at this. There's a sports ball player from down here who had a trans child, and they left whatever team it was to move someplace else because the, the child felt threatened. Right? Am I right about there? There was some, yeah, I, I can't I, think of who it is. But anyway, so that is unbelievably shocking. And then I know how the hundreds of anti-LGBTQ plus bills are affecting me and other adults my age and younger. So this Trevor Project survey gives us the numbers when it comes to the LGBTQ plus youth, and they are disproportionately impacted as many of the bills target them. They're specifically aimed at the young. And it's no wonder that it feels like such a hopeless time that many of them are struggling with these kinds of uh, thoughts of suicide and mental health issues. It's it feels hopeless to me, and I'm sure it feels hopeless to them. It feels like a huge step backward. <laughs> the consolation is that they that these bills are slowing down and that they're not all passing. So the huge step backward, I think, maybe has at least been arrested. I don't know when it's going to turn around, so to speak. But <sighs> I think the trend is slowing, at least. Thank goodness. We certainly don't need another Matthew Shepard. I'm, I'm curious when you when you say that um, there there's a school of thought. However, um, the passage of laws this year have dropped 400 percent this year versus 2023. But there's a school of thought that says, well, that is because the people that are voting for these laws in state houses hasn't changed their opinion. They've just recognized that they are in an election year. And that gay culture that DeSantis proved in the presidential candidate, uh, his candidacy, that attacks were not, uh, gay culture attacks were not a good strategy to propel for the electorate. And they've suspended mm. the hate, not eliminated the hate. What do y'all think about that? That wow, that's it's, wrong. it's not that no. I have to agree, everything better. gets done it's for political just, reasons. Mm. We're pausing it. Do you think yeah. that that might be true? I'm, I never thought about it. It's I, possible. I think it's sad when we get to a point where we say, "Well, it's they've slowed down passing the laws because mm -hmm. they've still passed some." You know, it's we're almost celebrating the slowdown. I'd rather celebrate the overturning of them and the not letting them happen in the first place. Right. Um, so that 
that makes me a little sad. Um, very sad, I guess. But I think it's just, it's hard to wrap your head around it. It's just, I was bullied when I was younger, but mine was more because of my size as a youth, not because of being LGBTQ. I didn't come out um, till much later, but I, the Gen Z population, I mean, look at the Gen Z population. It's a growing population of LGBTQ kids and the number of people now that are potentially being bullied in schools. And, and I'm hoping that some of these laws slowing down might also be because a lot of these people also have Gen Z people in their lives that are being directly impacted by these laws. We, we remind everybody, uh, uh, Greg and I, in our demographic, our generational demographic, uh, only 3.7% identify as LGBT. Um, Gen Z uh, studies show 20% <laughs> identify. Nice. And, and this is the fear that's created in the GOP and mm -hmm. radical evangelical and GOP of, wait, are you just thinking it's cool to be uh, queer and that's why the number is so high? Or is it really those kind of numbers exist mm. of our generation, we didn't come out mm. or we That's didn't true. identify, mm. so you know, we don't know that. You know, one other thing I want to um, mention about uh, the Trevor Project and this study is the National Survey proves for those people that think we got marriage in 2015, we're good, we're good. Mm -mm. This study proves how not only untrue that is, but actually hurtful mm -hmm. those kind of feelings mm -hmm. and statements are. Because at the end of the day, uh, the national survey by the Tribal Project proves systemic discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because in America tonight on the NBC Nightly News, they would lead with a story of a major national study that said four out of every 10 youth in America are considering suicide. It would be an all-stop moment. That's what is going on in LGBT. Mm -hmm. That is systemic discrimination mm -hmm. by a broader class and community. And we should be paying attention to that. An older representation in LGBT, when you go, I got marriage, I'm good, you should be thinking mm -hmm. about <laughs> who we're pulling along yeah. with us uh, right. for LGBT youth. And one, one last thing before we move on that I want to mention. One of the things that's very sad to me about this reporting is the Trevor Project. The Trevor Project is so incredibly important in America. A 24 hour a day suicide hotline right. for those four and 10 kids that are at one o'clock in the morning going, I just can't get up tomorrow and go to school. Yes. And the Trevor Project sits there for them. Mm -hmm. And the Trevor Project over the last two years with the hate that we've watched, the the bullying that we've watched to our, our corporate and our business mm -hmm. structures, the Trevor Project has had difficulty in meeting their financial mm -hmm. needs that they have to serve uh, LGBT youth in America, have, uh, have laid off many, uh, counselors, even phone emergency coverage. And the ramifications of what we've seen over these last couple of years by radical evangelicals, radical conservatives, radical haters, the direct impact of that hate is on organizations mm -hmm. like the Trevor Project, which are yeah. so incredibly vitally mm -hmm. needed. These are the actual impacts mm -hmm. of what we're watching. Four in 10 thinking about suicide, and we're delivering less services mm. to be able to help them. Yes, and I'm sorry to hear that. We need the Trevor Project more than ever now, <laughs> than because ever. we would yeah. hope that eventually we would grow out of needing such things, mm. but mm. not yet. Not mm. yet. That's not right. yet. Well, oh boy.